Timothy Subban is one of the best defensemen in today's NHL. He's known for dazzling the fans. Subban is a favorite of the crowd here in Montreal. But last month, the cheers came from inside a hospital. My foundation and I have made a charitable commitment of $10 million to the Montreal Children's Hospital. The hospital says it's the biggest donation by a sports figure in Canadian history. Subban will become a regular visitor. I want to be in the Paralympics in basketball, and I just like to know how it feels to be number one. And a fund in his name is being set up to help parents of sick kids make ends meet. Oh, no problem, no problem, no problem. For P.K. Subban, family is key. Family is what's put me here and put me in this position. He and his siblings grew up in Toronto, raised by determined parents who immigrated to Canada from the Caribbean. As a child, Subban's dad worked two vice principal jobs. He often wasn't home until 10 p.m., but he'd wake his son up, drive down to the ice at Nathan Phillips Square, and skate late into the night. Eventually, he turned his backyard into a rink for all the Subban kids. But there wasn't just pressure to be good in sports. Whether you want to be like PK or you want to be like Wayne Gretzky, we want them to be something good. And with this donation, PK Subban has become more than a hockey hero. Sure I sat down with him earlier this week in Toronto. PK, it's great to meet you. Ah, nice to meet you as well, Wendy. So when you saw PK Subban yeah. atrium up there, did, what was that experience like? Oh, it's special. It's special to think that uh, your name is in a hospital, in the heart of the hospital. Um, you know, to think that someday I'll have kids and uh, we'll visit the hospital and they're going to see their dad's name up on the wall. It's a pretty special thing. Um, I hope that I can also bring them to the Bell Center to look up at a banner, a uh, Stanley Cup banner as well. Uh, it'd be, be a pretty special day if I could do the both. Um, but yeah, it, it, it definitely is. Um, gives you chills and goosebumps to, to see it up there. It's probably one of the best experiences I've had in my life. Um, you know, and to say that uh, one of the best experiences for me is outside of hockey is probably something I would have never imagined would happen to me at the age of 26. You know, and this is definitely a bright spot for me. Ten million dollars, that's a lot of money. How did you come up with that? Um, you know, I know you make a lot of money, but still, ten million. Yeah, it's a lot of money, but I think um, my focus is, and where I think everybody else's focus should be, is how many families that's going to help. Uh, the way that I see it is... Uh, the first day that I made the donation and walking down the street and having kids come up to me and um, telling me that, uh, you know, for the first three years of their lives they spent in the hospital and hearing stories like that from people every day, whether it's kids or parents. So a lot of people were able to resonate with that type of donation and that type of commitment. And um, you know what, there's no other way to explain it, but um, we always say it, but sometimes you got to put your money where your mouth is. You didn't want to buy like a yacht or... Mm -hmm. A jet. <laughs> I might need a little bit more than $10 million to buy a yacht. Um, you know what? Uh, no, I mean, for everybody has um, the ability to spend money on whatever it is that makes them feel happy. Why does that make you happy? Uh, I think it gives me a sense of fulfillment. I think we are, we're all very privileged, um, especially with the experiences that I've had with children and um, seeing different parts of the world and how people live and blessed with the right people around me all the time who continue to support me. So um, with my experiences of going to Haiti and, and seeing a lot of different things in a short period of time in my life, I felt the need to want to give back and do it in a way where I felt that uh, it was going to help a lot of people. I've always you know, been aware of the fact that uh, you know, not everybody is privileged to, to just have the basic things in life and food and water and clothing. Um, you know, but when I went to Haiti, I, I, I really got a good taste of what some people go through around the world. And I was there for four days and uh, it wasn't a very good four days. I mean, seeing families, it was only about a year. It's a year after uh, the disaster there and I couldn't imagine um, you know, still what I was seeing, you know. Um, but when I came back, uh, you know, I, you just quickly realize how, how good we have it here. And um, I wanted to help people. And I, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do at that point in time. I mean, being 20 years old, I mean, 
I don't think you understand really, you know, how to help at that point in time. There was a period where some of your peers were calling you arrogant or mm -hmm. cocky. Um, did you get any reaction to this? Not really. I mean, uh, everybody has their opinion. I've, I've never um, ever commented on what critics have to say. I think, uh, if anything, I've gotten a lot of heat from a lot of my supporters for not uh, standing up for myself and defining myself when people take shots at character and stuff like that. So why don't you? Uh, because I, I'm a firm believer that, you know, number one, in hockey, I just try to let my play do the talking for me. You know, it's, it's, it's very easy to say things about people, but the one thing in professional sports is the stats don't lie and numbers don't lie and results don't lie. When someone does take uh, a shot at my character, that's just a little bit different. If I'm asked about it, then I will give my opinion um, because now you're, you're attacking me as a person. That's completely different from as a hockey player. They talk about me, how I play the game. I mean, that's a part of it. You know, as a professional athlete, people are going to critique your game and pick it apart, and you have to expect that. But uh, to the people that talk about my character, well, I'm interested to hear what they have to say. The people who have talked about your character, have they <laughs> talked about the donation? A lot of the uh, feedback that I've been given has been sort of my team and my family, um, and it's all been positive, obviously. It's... it's uh, it's quite warming when you people come up to you and said, oh, I donated $100,000 to the charity, you know, and uh, a friend of mine got me to do it. And um, you've inspired a lot of people to take a look at their lives. And when I hear those types of things, it's great. You know, um, that's my focus. Uh, you know, that's that's the fulfillment in life is when you can inspire people to do good things. Um, I'm sorry, but that'll make me feel better than any goal that I'll score, unless it's maybe for the Stanley Cup. Uh, or a gold medal or something like that. Yeah, so w how, would that sort of be a bigger high than the, uh, the donation? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> when you change somebody's life or you have a, um, the ability to change lives, it's a pretty special thing. And until you have somebody tell you that, that you've helped change their life or somebody else's, uh, it's hard to understand what the feeling is. You know, for a lot of people, they've never experienced that. Um, I have, you know, so... Uh, it may sound odd to people when I talk about these experiences as my best life experiences because people expect that just to be about hockey. Well, um, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I, I play hockey. Um, you know, I don't see myself as a hockey player. You know, I just see myself as someone who plays hockey. So uh, for me, the way I live my life and part of the contribution is just me being who I am and wanting to give back to people and, and helping people. PK, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you, Wendy. Thanks so much. All right.